Hey guys, NJ here and we're looking at something a little bit different today. This is a 130 um, and with the weather well and truly on the turn, certainly here in the UK and things getting colder, the nights drawing in earlier, um, there is this attraction to move towards the smaller drones that we can you know, fly in more confined spaces um, and certainly something that could possibly be flown in a, you know, maybe a large indoor environment or a go-kart track or something suitable. Um, so these small Smaller quads like the 130s, I, th I think they they could be uh, something that are, are really worth considering, and they they certainly seem to have come a long way in terms of what they now offer spec wise. And I've largely ignored the 130s until more recently, and this one did catch my eye. It was actually Banggood who suggested this one to me, um, so my thanks to them for sending this unit over for review. I'll put product links in the description so you can uh, you can go off and, and see that for yourself. Um, but as I said, the specs look quite good on this and uh, the what's attractive about the 130s are they are small they are compact um, the parts generally are a bit cheaper um, uh, being smallest but certainly when it comes to the motors props and all the other bits and pieces um, the other nice thing is that we're still on a brushless uh, setup. Obviously, I've done a, re a review of the uh, QX90 and I've shown you the QX95. Um, they're great quads, micro quads, um, but they're brushed. It'd be nice to have that brushless performance still. So this one uh, definitely took my uh, took my fancy, as we say. Um, in terms of what you get, you do actually get um, three canopies when you order um, order this this quadcopter. Um, you can see there's the white one installed uh, in here and then there's also this grey and the black. Now as nice as the grey and the black look, um, and I certainly think the, gray, the, the black will look very stealthy and cool, um, stealthy is probably not what we, what we want when it comes to uh, a quadcopter this size. I'd, I'd probably prefer a choice uh, so I could actually pick three white ones. I want this thing to be as visible as possible because if you lose it it's, uh, it's a bit trickier to go and find. Um, so that's what comes along with it. Let's have a look inside the box. Um, we get a pretty uh, nicely illustrated manual um, with a decent amount of information. Um, you won't be shocked to hear that the um, English or the, the translation to English is not terribly uh, concise or, or, or easy to understand, uh, hilarious as some of it may be. Um, but all the information is there, though some of it, you, as I said, you'll just have to uh, you'll have to kind of decipher and and draw your own conclusions about. But uh, it's it's a fairly there's there's no surprises in here. It's a fairly straightforward um, affair. So um, what else do we get? We've got a uh, looks like a 5.8 um, video. Uh, for your video, 5.8 antenna, just a standard dipole antenna. Now, you know, some of you might moan here and say, you know, well, where's the uh, where's where's the the clove clove leaf antenna, um, the circular polarized. And uh, to be honest with you, on something this small, you know, you should really be keeping it close. It's uh, we've all got stacks of those antennas. You you can put one on, but there might be instances where you're fairly close by where this is actually a more sensible option. It's certainly more robust. Uh, and it's a little bit lighter, so you know. I, to be honest with you, I've got lots of 5.8 circular polarized antennas. I'm quite happy to to have one of these as an alternative um, to throw on. Um, maybe you know, while I'm tuning and, and getting the rates right and starting to throw it about, this might be a more durable option uh, to start with. So for me, anyway, no complaints with that. Um, there are a couple of um, micro JST connectors which go into the. Uh, controller, the flight controller, and this is to one of these is wired um, to the correct pin for S bus, which is this one here, and then this one is uh, uh, CCPM, CPPM. Sorry, that's my helicopter days coming through again. Um, so there's that. There's a couple of very uh, sort of cheap and cheerful non-rubberized battery straps, but um, there are a few ways around using those, so that's fine. Um, now these props, I was having a look online, and it does seem these little quad blades. Um, they're quite low pitch, but um, yeah, these these they look pretty decent and and well made. Having a little look around, I think these are actually uh, King Kong props. Um, so that's quite nice that they've included a set of King Kong props. Actually, two sets. Um, that's that's no bad thing at all. Um, and 
you know you can I, I will experiment with different props on this to see to see how they perform but I imagine these will these will work out pretty well so yeah nice to see those nice to see those included I'm pretty sure they're King Kong you never know because it's hard to keep up with who's cloning the clones of clones if you know what I mean um, but yeah to my knowledge I, I think these are King Kong props so yeah two sets of props and then here we have the drone itself um, let's pull the foam out so I can get to it um, and my gosh isn't it small it's really quite tiny but I've got to say on first impressions um, it looks really nice it's a really uh, uh, the carbon I mean the weaves you know it's not a small tight weave it's fairly large um, it's not you know there is a bit of flex in the in the carbon fiber arms there but certainly not enough that's going to cause you problems um, these appear to be uh, 1306 3600 kV motors they are for us capable and apparently they do have those nice strong Japanese bear uh, uh, Japanese magnets and bearings in them so um, you know who knows a lot of motors claim to have that only time will tell um, in terms of how well these will these will do generally the smaller these are um, the more the bearings tend to wear out far quicker especially on these sort of crazy high rpm but you know, let's keep the price point in mind here and keep it all relevant. It does, uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll suffice for now. So this is quite a tiny camera in here. We'll have a look when I lift the hood off um, at that. Um, it is a 600 TVL CMOS and on the product description they put good low light performance. Um, yeah, we'll see about that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll reserve judgment until I've actually flown it, but um, let's just say I'm not hopeful. That may need to be replaced for um, something more suitable, um, even if that means reaming this out a little bit more to fit a, a more standard um, camera like the 1177, something that we're we're used to for that for that you know sort of great camera performance in all lighting conditions. So in terms of arm thickness, let's see what we're looking at here. Um, that does appear to be, yeah, it's two mil uh, in terms of the thickness of the frame. I, I think that'll be fine, to be honest with you. I don't see that being an issue on something this small and light. It does look like they've, they've reamed a little bit out here in order to recess the motor wires. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I think if you're gonna have a, you know, arms that are, are two mil, it'd be nice not to start taking sections of the carbon away. Um, although it's down the length of the arm, I'm sure it's still gonna be absolutely fine, but I'd much rather they sat on top with a piece of tape around them than uh, kind of recessed into there. But you know, that's just my opinion. It's not, not really a, a big thing. Okay, let's pop the screws off and have a look at what's under the hood. So with those two screws removed, we can now take this uh, outer case off. Um, something to be aware of. Um, at the back here, you've got these two holes where the uh, these two little lugs from the back sit uh, sit in just to hold the uh, hold the the frame in position. Um, that's not an issue. What is an issue is at the front. These actually have lips on them to keep the front down, so you don't want to go breaking those by pulling this off wrong. Um, what I would do is uh, where they come away quite easily at the back because they're just going in vertical slots. Um, I would pull the back over the SMA connector and then the front will, will unclip and yeah you can just uh, maybe just make out there's some little lips on the uh, on those so yeah just uh, something to bear in mind when you're pulling that off keep it in good condition so having a look at the guts of this there's that little uh, 600 TVL CMOS cam as I said I'm very dubious about that performance but you know we'll see where we are with it first and give it a good test before we, we go complaining and changing um, it looks to me like we have the flight controller and uh, which is combining with the VTX on top um, you've got your USB on the side straight away you know that's a bit of an issue you've got no hole in the side of this for the USB um, that's going to be a pain um, the VTX itself is it's uh, switchable VTX which is a really nice touch you've got um, from what I can see in the manual it seems to suggest uh, you can have it off uh, 25 milliwatts 200 milliwatts or 400 milliwatts um, and you've got a little LED board there to give you the uh, frequency and band um, and then there's a little dot in the corner which will flash uh, indicating that power output uh, the SMA connector here is 
um, yeah, you can see it's it feels really solid um, and well mounted. Will that stop it breaking in a crash? Uh, again, you know, well, that's what I'm here for, guys. I guess I'll be testing all this stuff out. Um, there is going to be a you know a second layer of support from the top of this. Um, holding, you know, bracing that in place. That'll be braced at the top and at the base where it's where it's joined to the board. There is that underneath. We have the PDB and ESCs. Now you'll notice this tiny little connector. Uh, not what you're used to. This is not an XT60. It's an XT30. Um, you need to bear that in mind when you're ordering batteries. It's not the end of the world if you find a battery that you absolutely love, but it happens to have an XT60. You can either get an adapter, though I don't recommend that because that will bring the connection way out here, or just you know buy some XT30 uh, connectors, um, you know, from your your favourite hobby store, and then uh, cut and resolder those on for for this uh, for this to work. Um, the batteries that I actually ordered were the these ones here, the Tattoo 850 milliamp. Uh, 4S75C, so yeah, I didn't mess around. I decided to get some really powerful, decent batteries to throw in here and, and you know, really go for it. Um, but these do come with the XT30s on them just uh, as, as one option for you. And, you know, Tattoo's a nice battery, so that's, that's what we'll be testing with. Um, the ESC board underneath um, is BL Heli S, which is great. 20 amp with a 40 amp burst. That's you know more than enough uh, for what we'll be dealing with here. Um, so that's going to be nice, and uh, I would, you know, I'm very sure we'll be able to use BL Heli pass through to uh, get those on the latest latest firmware. The flight controller does come with uh, Beta Flight 3 preloaded on it, which is nice. Uh, very happy. To, to see they've they're now shipping with that on, and the flight controller does appear to be a uh, SPF3, uh, which is no real shocker, but it's a good tried tested F3 board, which I have many hours on, and uh, I've had lots of success with that board, so I have no uh, issue with that at all. So that really uh, kind of is the guts of it. Um, so I guess now what we're going to do is uh, look at installing. The remaining components I will need to put a receiver in here that one does not come with it um, the receiver I will use is the XSR uh, the FR Sky XSR and if you look under here there's actually plenty of room to mount that underneath and then what I will do I think is run the aerials up inside the canopy I'll put one across and one uh, down the length of the canopy giving me that 90 degrees uh, for you know good diversity um, and we'll see how we get on like I said I'm not planning to fly this miles away um, I think that will work absolutely fine uh, if I can get away with that and get good results I would prefer that to drilling new holes and running tubes and having everything outside so I will give that a go and see how that works out so that's that's what's left to do so it will just be a case of uh, uh, getting into beta flight and we'll look at that later um, adding the XSR and um, putting the battery on and going for a fly so it should all be fairly quick so we'll rejoin once I've got those things in place <laughs> 